Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React View channel. So, Malta has now released the snippets. I hope these are significant snippets. I'm not a huge fan of reacting to snippets and I don't really know when the full versions will come out. Probably not until the live quarterfinals, right? And the first one is on the 13th of January. But because I intend to go to the final in Malta on the 11th of February, I am invested in this song contest. So as a result of that, I was going to watch the snippets anyway. So I might as well watch them with you. <laughs> um, but yeah... ESC Tom, who uh, I'm a big fan of, has said countless times he doesn't react to snippets. And I kind of am in agreement with that. I don't react to snippets. But because the full songs aren't out, but I do want to check these out. I do want to check these out. Um, and I do have one or two people from Malta um, who I'm friends with on social media um, who is curious, are curious, what I think of the snippets. So um, let's check them out. So how long are these snippets? 30 seconds. That's loud. So this is the fan favourite, right? Aiden. I think if you push come to shove, if you speak to most Eurovision fans, justice for Ritmo. <laughs> I quite liked that um, that rise up there, rise up there. <laughs> um, I obviously can't e escape social media on Twitter. It would seem that from all we've got thirty, haven't we? Thirty songs. This is the one that everyone is talking about purely based on the fact that it is Aiden. Um, it's a snippet at the end of the day. Let's not forget that. But ultimately, I think with Aiden, it's the performance as well. Let's see how he performs it. But I must say, I kind of from that snippet, it's a snippet. I do quite like or might prefer his recent song, Madame. But that's only because I've heard the full version. And the Iroloska one, I've only heard that once. That was quite good. The good thing about Aiden is we know that he writes his own music, which is great. And ultimately, was that in Maltese? I think it was, wasn't it? I want to hear Maltese at Eurovision. Okay, James... Lewis. Author and composer, always respect that. Harmless. <laughs> Harmless. Um, I love an orchestral production. Um, okay. Okay, it's interesting. I wonder whether they get to pick the snippet of their song that they get to kind of showcase. So I can't work out, was that the climax of the song? Because he went really, really slow at the end. If that's the climax of the song, I'd be slightly worried. But if it's midway through, hopefully it builds. Okay, who've we got now? Fabrizio, let us shine. Ah, Eurovision royalty. He's back. I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's um, it's not too kind of dissimilar from his previous Eurovision entries, like obviously his last one I do. The lyrics are really, really cheesy. Don't let her go, don't let her go, try to be better. Um, Fabrizio, was I wowed by that? Probably not. Was it camp? Yep. Was it cheesy? Yep. Does it sound like your previous efforts? Yep. Do I think that that's a winner? No. No, that's old school. That sounded a little dated. Okay, Clintess. I'm curious to listen to this one.
controversial. <laughs> there was something quite good about that song, also, moreover. It's the kind of, kind of power ballad, could maybe be in a musical sort of vibe that I love. I think that song's actually not bad. The only thing that I'm disappointed by is the vocal that's evidently has the potential to be a power ballad. And from what I heard from the studio version from Clintess, I don't know if they've got the vocals to pull that song off. My only opinion. My only opinion? Only my opinion. Right, Brooke, looking forward to this one. Cool, how many songwriters does she want? <laughs> but she's one of them. Okay. Look, that's not a bad song. You can hear it. I'm just looking at the songwriter's look at that. Um, okay, so it just does feel like a song that we would hear in Melody Festival, and right? And I feel like I've heard that song quite a few times, that sort of sound. I don't know what I was expecting. Let me hear that again. Have I got that wrong? I'm just a little bit disappointed. What you know with Brooke is she's going to deliver power vocal. She's going to sing Amazing Live. Her previous efforts have shown that. All I will say, Malta, is when you sent Amber with Warrior, you didn't qualify with that effort. That is much better from what the snippet I can hear from that. But what a weird snippet to choose, because... The chorus wasn't showcased there. I think maybe hold judgment on that one. We didn't, re I don't think we've heard the best part of that song. Strange snippet to pick. Okay, who I we guess got? It doesn't matter. Ryan. Okay, so this is the winner of X Factor, right? I follow him on Instagram. Very, very nice guy. Aaron Sibley. Hold on a minute. Isn't that, isn't that the YouTuber that also tried out for San Marino last year? I think it is. I think it is. Why did I go London then? I think it is. I would say even more so that compared to Brooke, you can't judge that song, can you, on that snippet? I don't think that was even the chorus. If that was the chorus, which I don't think it was, then I would be slightly worried. The one thing I'm not worried about in regards to Ryan is same what I said about Brooke. He's a fantastic live vocalist and he's got a beautiful vocal. Um, and Aaron Sibley's British, being British myself, bias. I, what can you say about that snippet other than the fact that it's a ballad? Matt Black! Come around now, come around now, come around now, hey. I said, come, come around now, come, come around now, hey. Someone tell me how many times does he say come around? <laughs> that was a, a viral joke online for quite a while. How long, how many times he said come around? Um, that ended up kind of rising in the end. That made my kind of top 40 national final songs last year. I have high expectations for this song. Come on, Matt Black. Give me the same sort of vibe as come around from last year. He's also fabulous. Okay, Matt. <laughs> Hold on a minute. What does it make me go loco when you go down, down, down? Matt Black. Okay. <laughs> Again, I don't think that was the chorus, was it? I'm really rooting for Matt Black. I really, really am. 
Um, and what I kind of learned from last year is his live performance of Come Come Around Now. I don't know why I just can't say Come Around. Why I'm just like, Come Come Around Now. Is the fact that he's a fantastic performer. He's an entertainer. It, ugh, I mean, the lyrics, you know, Eurovision is a family show. <laughs> But nonetheless, some of us don't have families and some of us don't mind um, a bit of blue. Um, Okay. I'm glad it's giving me the same sort of vibe as Come Around. I just hope it's as catchy as Come Around from last year. Right, Maxine. Do you say say Pace in Malta or is it Pace or... I don't know. She's one of the kind of known artists. What's she done? M-E-S-C... Twice, is it? She's tried twice. She'll have her fans. I wasn't expecting a ballad. That sounded okay. Who's a songwriter for that? It's interesting seeing these songwriters and thinking particularly names that don't sound Maltese or Italian where they're from. Okay. I mean, the recorded vocal sounded lovely. If she's able to able to pull off that vocal live, then I definitely want to hear that in the final. Again, I don't know. I think that's the sort of song where a snippet doesn't really help you. You need to hear the whole three minutes, right, to see if you get some sort of feels or vibe from it. But I think that's got potential from what I could hear from the snippet. Okay, Dan. I'm assuming he's written this song. Ah, oh, very kind of like Jason Marazzi esque I'm getting my phone because who was that doctor from Malta who sent a song very, very similar that didn't do too badly for Malta? John Luca, Tomorrow. Tomorrow was so different. He knows I'm not a huge fan. Oh, I broke my watch. Oh no. Um, okay. Oh, I haven't said anything about it. Um, it's okay. It's a nice little listen on a beach with a beer or non-alcoholic beer. Just a nice summery feel song. It's not going to rock any boats, but I didn't think John Luca was going to rock any boats either. And he did. So, well, I mean, he qualified, didn't he? Where did he come? Where did he come? He came eighth! Didn't understand that. Francesca. When you've had enough, you. When I've had enough, you'll learn to miss my love. Choices. I mean, that's a very song festival song, right? Let's remind ourselves that yes, obviously Malta's trying to select a song for Eurovision, but it's also a music festival as well, a song festival that was very song festival esque. Yeah, I can already tell even after the full three minutes. I don't know if I would be a fan. But she seems cool. Okay, who have we got now? Andre. Andre? Okay, Broken Hill. Um, it's gonna be interesting whether I'm. Ass- 
I, um, I don't know, probably Aiden might have benefit from this. I wonder in regards to the stage in each song, who's um, funding that? Because I'm starting to learn now, following national finals quite closely, like Serbia, like now I've found out in regards to Spain, the artists or their record labels fund the staging. I think if that's staged well, that could be a decent three minutes. It seemed quite nice. There was a lot of repetition of Broken Hill, but ultimately, Andre, you've got to also credit where credit's due if the artist writes the song. Also, it's quite nice we've got a bit of a, an upbeat number. Okay, Jessica, right, what is it? 11th time a charm. But she, like, the point is she's been to Eurovision just for a different country, San Marino. And that must be amazing. I'm sure that choice was done because she always wanted to go to Eurovision, but it's not the same as representing your own country. So let's see, unapologetic. Wasn't a huge fan of her efforts last year. Just saying. Oh, and she's a co-author. Upbeat, upbeat, upbeat. Come on, Jessica, give us an upbeat song. You're a good dancer. Okay, um, the first time you're going to hear me say this already needs a revamp. <laughs> the production didn't sound very expensive and I was kind of buying into it up into the chorus and the chorus itself is fine. You know, um, Emma Muscat's efforts at Eurovision, which I actually quite liked this year. A lot of people couldn't place why they didn't particularly fall in love with the song. And then suddenly out of nowhere, someone was like, it's junior Eurovision when they saw the stage. And everyone was like, yes, that was my issue with that song. It was very junior Eurovision sounding. Jessica, the production of that song makes it sound very junior Eurovision. Um, but I'm going to enjoy watching you perform it because I think you're a fantastic performer. And regardless of whether I've liked your songs in the past or not, I've always enjoyed watching your performances. Um, okay but I'm already calling for a revamp of that one. Okay, the busker. Dance our own party. <laughs> right, I'm gonna have to create some sort of award in regards to the best lyrics. I feel better in my sweater. Um, okay, good for you. Don't we all? I feel better in this sweater as well. Mind you, I've had to purchase this because I'm carrying a bit of Christmas weight. Okay, the lead singer is very handsome, I must admit. Um, and everyone loves a uh, saxophone, right? Okay, the busker. Um, probably need to see that one on stage. Probably need to see that one on stage for the full three minutes. That has potential to be entertaining on stage. I'm not sure the song is a song that I want to kind of download on my phone just yet. Right, Christian Arding. We're gonna have a song at Maltese. Yes. Okay, so that's the sort of song that I don't mind, actually. <laughs> At the end of the day, you always need a song in there. Well, songs pl plural for different generations. So you're going to need this song in there for, let's say, elderly, elderly generation. But I quite liked it. So um, I would say, what are we even, are we even halfway through from all these snippets? I would say this is probably already in my top four. Probably because it just sounded polished. And I think because he picked a very good segment of that song. I thought that sounded all right. Okay, Jason, Anything Can Happen. He's the songwriter of the song. Gotta respect that. I've said that a few times, but it's true. Hmm. 
<laughs> what is with these lyrics? <laughs> Beauty that's inside us. Um, Jason, loving your energy. And I want the jumper. Where'd you get that jumper from? We get so busy with challenges around us. We need to remember the beauty is inside us. I mean, it is a message that's relevant. And with the message being sung with the energy that Jason is giving us, what more do you want? Oh. <laughs> there is definitely a sound for everybody, as far as we heard. At the end of the day, it's harmless. Um, and it's a great message with a guy sporting an amazing jumper. It looked like a jumper. Mark Anthony Bottolo, Tears. Again, he's written this song. Ah. Oh. Do I know him? Didn't he do it last year, I think? Oh, it's gonna be hard to sing live. That feels like going to church on a Sunday, one of these kind of new age churches which sing kind of those sounding songs. <laughs> he did do it last year, right? I may be totally wrong with that one. I mean, it didn't seem to be an obvious melody to catch hold of, which is worrying because I think that was the chorus. Um, okay. Okay. Eliane. Okay, what have we got? Be good. Be good. Okay, automatically in my top three. It sounds similar, although, again, I would say that probably needs a bit of a boosting in the production. It sounds a little bit like Queen B from Melody Grand Prix in Norway this year, which I absolutely loved. If you follow my channel, you'll know that. I love that sort of sound. And moreover, that song requires a performance if you listen to the lyrics. I can't wait to see how she performs that song. Um, it's already a song that massively stands out. Okay, but it's my sort of vibe and I love that sort of sound. So there are some good, there's a part of me that just wants to know, does Malta need four quarterfinals? <laughs> but no, like at the end of the day, there's so much talent in Malta. Evidently, I can't believe on such a small island, it has this many singers. When I say this many singers, I'm not just talking about this. Um, Cause a lot of these are new this year. I'm talking about like all of the years prior. Evidently, everyone in Malta can sing. So by having such a large national final or song contest, at least gives everybody a chance to showcase their talent, which I'm kind of down for. Yeah, it's just going to be four very long quarterfinals. <laughs> okay, Maria. Again, she's written this song. Part of the songwriting team, should we say. I'm just, I'm happy that it's upbeat. We've got a lot of kind of, actually, they're not a lot of slow songs, but it just sounded a bit more kind of current. Um, but then you've got to kind of place that song in other national finals and consider how that would do. Again, it's just a snippet. There doesn't sound to be, there doesn't sound to be anything obviously amazing with that one, but 
live, I don't know, but it doesn't kind of scream out at me as awesome. Um, And I think that's the thing that you've got to realise, when you've got so many okay songs, when songs are above okay, let's just obviously kind of then put those in other national finals and see where that would stand. From what I can hear from that snippet, it's, again, with all of these snippets, obviously they've chosen the part of the song, but I would if I'm going to showcase and promote my song to get people excited about it, I would pick the part that kind of showcases the best part, right? Which you would hope would have a decent melody, a hook. I didn't hear a hook there. Okay. Clinksman. Piranha. Start. Is that supposed to be serious? Like, I think it is, isn't it? No, 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 no. There is a reason why songs do not get inspired by a flesh eating fish. <laughs> I was looking at the songwriting team then and I was quite excited. Um, no, no, like, no, no, um, no. <sighs> This is a shame. Right, Lindsay. Haunted. Apparently she wants a whole team as well. I'm not very good with names, so I'm sure some of these people may be kind of people that I should be familiar with in regards to songwriters of other songs, but I don't know. Okay. Well, she's dressed for the theme. It's almost like she knew that it was going to be... She just blends in. She's camouflaged. Okay, I quite like that song. (laughs) But I do like that sort of sound. I do like that sort of sound. I like that. I quite liked that one. That's a standout. How am I going to remember all these songs? I need to do a top five. That's in my top five currently. But again, probably because it just sounds quite good, but they've also picked a very, very good part of that song to showcase. Um, But also I do kind of like this kind of throwback kind of 80s power ballad vibe so okay Lindsay Horton must remember why am I not writing these down Mikhail oh another song in Maltese I want his eyes how amazing is his eyes good at least it sounded current at <laughs> least it sounded current it didn't sound dated that's competitive i don't know who mikhail is um not like i should um but that sounded quite good he had a very very good vocal his eyes were amazing maybe i was just drawn in by the eyes no the song sounded good the song sounded fresh okay cheryl probably not cheryl cheryl but she's also co-wrote this one. Why are we not seeing her in silver? Has she not been able to get there? Okay. So has, has the snippet already started? So La La Land. That reminds me of um, Zara. What's her face from Sweden? I love that song. Underrated. Okay, 
Um, it's a bit difficult with that one because obviously we're not actually seeing her perform it, are we? Oh, I'm going to have to put a question mark over that one. But it sounded, again, a bit like the previous one. At least it sounded a bit more kind of radio friendly and just, yeah, current. Bradley, blackout. I won his jacket. Oh, he's singing his heart out. Interesting. I think I need to hear that one in full, but I'm a huge fan of dramatic production and also almost like a Gregorian choir in the background. But it just dragged on. I don't know. Rather than singing through, he held the notes so it felt a bit draggy. Not as in like a drag queen, but just dragged on. (laughs) It's really hard, isn't it, these snippets? But it's nice to see kind of like, or get a flavour of what we what 30 songs songs we've got. got. Sound Sound of my stilettos. Greta. (laughs) Body part. It sounded fine. I'll, I'll remember it because at some point I'm going to have to go back and work out what my top five are. Top five. It's almost, it's almost by what I can hear, a kind of lesser quality version of Matt Black. I've got higher high hopes for Matt Black when I hear that chorus. It's not bad. From what I can hear, it's not bad. But yeah. But also, I might be getting a bit of fatigue because there's a lot of songs. <laughs> there's a lot of songs. And they're not all golden. But it didn't sound too bad. It's going to be camp and it's going to be harmless. That, that song has potential. <clears throat> Who wrote that? Okay. That song has potential because there's a melody there. There's a melody. It's one of the few songs, actually, that I've heard so far that has an obvious melody, whereby when it hit the chorus and as he was singing, I was kind of going with him and I'm kind of annoyed that it stopped halfway through that chorus. That song has a lot of potential from what I can hear. That, I need to write these down. Why am I not writing these down? Right. In... Describable? actually has a lot of potential if you stage that well you give it a revamp because i don't know what was going on there with that ding 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 in the background of that chorus but that was very kind of like bon jovi-esque at first i was like it's a bit westlife but at the end it was like a rock ballad if you stage that right and you are that country that goes to Eurovision with a rock band. I always think, go to Eurovision with your own path and make sure no one kind of goes down that path with you. That's not a bad option because the others are fine. And there's been some great ones. Like I said, I need to go back and remind myself of them. That song, Malta. From what I heard from that chorus, very Bon Jovi, very... What was that one from Armageddon? (laughs) That one. Um, Oh, for goodness sake. What was it called? Liv Tyler's father. Aerosmith. What's wrong with me? Give that a revamp. Consider that one. From what I can hear. There's still some... We've still got some more. Did you say Jada? Jada? Now 
Is that a God song? I quite like that. I quite like that. I um I do like country westerny sounds and that did sound like a kind of a country ballad. The word grace worries me slightly. I find that that word has religious connotations. Not a huge fan of mixing Eurovision with religion. But her vocals sounded great. Kirsty, girls get down. Girls get down. That Cyprian Saza, or whatever his name is, has been a busy composer. He's composed about half of them. Mama's rocking it on the daily. <laughs> so far, MESC 2023 is giving me lyrics for the rest of the year in regards to iconic. That'll be all right. Okay, we're ending on some kind of decent-ish songs now. Um, okay, Curls, I need to hear that again. I'm looking forward to seeing how she stages this. And with the fact that Eurovision, you're now allowed recording backing vocals, that kind of down, the male voice in the background can just be pre-recorded. Right, John, Trailblazer. And it's your own song. Rooting for you. Um, not bad it does sound like a song that has been written for Eurovision which I don't think is always a good idea um it's fine there was a hook to it there's a melody to it um it's not it's not a trailblazer <laughs> it's not anything unique I think I could probably think of 10 songs in the last five years at Eurovision and the national selections. That sounds very similar. Not doing John for copyright there, but just the sound has been done. Okay, Dario, Bridal Road. Interesting stance. I'm not sure. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. The sound of it. There'll be people that like that song, for sure. It's okay. I won't, I, I don't think I'm going to remember it after 30 songs, though. Not offensive. <laughs> not wow. Fine. Hayley, TikTok. TikTok. Can you hear me go TikTok? Please be like that, Ukraine. What was that, 2013? It's not that. I really, I've already said this already, I really like an orchestral production. And moreover, oh, that's the powerhouse team, isn't it? Is that the first time I've seen Philip Vella down? Philip Vella and, uh, yeah, Borg. They've written quite a few of Malta's previous songs at Eurovision, right? Um, I've certainly seen Philip Vella's name. Um, okay, um, what I will say is the songs that are sung not in English are the ones that stand out the most to me. Um, I really do think Malta should 
definitely this year send a song in Maltese. But obviously my initial disappointment that it wasn't uh, an upbeat song like Ukraine's TikTok from a few years ago. But nonetheless, it sounded good. It, it, the production sounded quality and that's probably probably down to Philip Vella there. That's interesting. That'll stay in my mind, I think, from the snippet that I've heard. Stefan Heartbreaker. Spoken to Stefan on, on um, Instagram. So I'm looking forward to hearing this song. I know the song was written about someone in particular. It's a shame that song comes near the end and I am definitely getting some MESC fatigue. I'm out of fairness, I'm going to say, based on the snippet, one of the better ones. One of the better ones. Um, It's really hard from these snippets, isn't it? I don't know what I was expecting. Fairness and not being biased, I will just say that it wasn't bad. Right, another Stefan, what do you want? Ah, recognise that name. Richard, representing Malta with his family, right? Okay, you could hear some uh, clear... I don't know what to say anymore. (laughs) You can hear some clear instruments in the production. What value does that have? Um, It's not my sound. It's not my sound. Um, I appreciated the evident drums in the background, um, but it's it's not my sound. But yeah, I'm glad Richard is back, even as a composer, because... um, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I loved that song. Uh, one of my favourite Maltese songs. So I respect Richard. I'm not 100% sure about the this song though. Have I finished? No. Jake, love you like that. Michael James Down has been very busy as well. He's <laughs> been behind a lot of these songs. That sounded all right. That sounded all right. I'm quite looking forward to seeing how that staged live. Um, like that. I think that's going to stay in my head. That sounded quite good. Again, if you shove that into another national final, let's say if we do the infamous Benidorm Fest this year, I think no one would be talking about that. But nonetheless, that's had an impact for sure. In a good way. <laughs> in a good way. Still more songs. Marie Claire, thankful. I'm not counting how many songs I've listened to. I may need a break. I mean, it's a ballad, right? It's a ballad sung by evidently a lady that's got a lovely voice with a nice little choir in the background. It's just, I've I've heard it. It's not made me kind of think, ooh, that's exciting. Um, It's fine. It's fine. It's definitely better than some songs I've listened to. But ultimately, you know, when I go back through these, I've got to think of songs that stand out. Because at the end of the day, there is no jury to save Malta to get to the final this year. So you need to be doing something and that song's not going to do it. But ultimately, it sounded nice. (laughs) It sounded nice. (laughs) 
There are still songs. J.O. The Mirror. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> it sounds really similar to a song that I've only recently discovered because it was on someone's Instagram post. Um, it sound, it doesn't sound similar, but it's giving me the same vibe as a song from Brandy. <laughs> Do you remember Brandy? Um, starting now, a kind of very inspirational, upbeat, anthemic kind of number. I like that song. J-O, J-O, G-O, G-O. Um, good. I like that one. I think that's going to be in my top five at the end of this, when I get to the end. Dario, Pawn in a Game. Oh, he didn't make the intros. It's difficult because some of these songs, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just, I think now when I'm getting to the, the end, I'm like, I actually really want to hear something kind of unique or something that I would want to download or something. Like, I actually think this, a lot of these songs are absolutely fine. I had seen one or two things on Twitter to suggest that I was in for a long morning. <laughs> it's just a shame because a lot of these songs they just balance each other's out. I feel like I've heard this sound song quite a few times so far. It's not a bad song, it, but it's, I've, I've run out of things to say now. That's the problem with the songs that come in the, the latter third. What else can I say? It sounded fine. Maria, Our Flame. Playback pause because your account is being used in a, oh, it's because I use my phone. It's, I've confused my YouTube account. Come on, I feel like I'm gonna like this one. Okay, harmless, fine, nothing wrong with it. I probably won't, I was kind of going up to the chorus being like, come on girl, come on Maria, and oh, flame. fine, fine. I just, it, it's not an instantaneous melody in the chorus that makes me think, yes. Right, Dominic and Anna, whatever wind may blow. Ooh. Do you know what? It's got to the point now whereby there are 40 songs. I just checked. I've been saying 30 the whole time, but I needed to know if I was near the end. I was like, I have listened to 30 songs. No, I'm going to listen to 40 songs. Um, okay. Because I'm near the end, I'm actually just liking anything that sounds different now. And that gives me musical theatre, which I love. I think that that song stands out. And I actually quite liked it. And straight away, again, they've probably been quite clever with the snippet that they've picked. But straight away, the production was in your face. I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> because I've heard so many songs that sound or can be categorised in the same category if I was like a sort of music professor. For me, this is one of the better ones because it's different. And also, I'm a big fan of a slow up tempo. Slow up tempo. A musical theatre sounding song is my vibe. So Dominic and Anna, that's a good song. 
in my taste. I'm not sure whether or not I should pick it, but nonetheless, I was getting fatigue. I think that's testament. I was getting real fatigue until that song came on. So thank you. And my plant thanks you as well. <laughs> Sorry. Ian, on my way. Melanie George you as well. She's back. Dum, bum, bum. He's selling the song. <laughs> I don't think that they've selected the chorus, have they, for that intro? So it's a bit, or that snippet, so it's a bit difficult to say anything. Um, but if Ian had one job and they were like, sell the song, Ian, he sold it. It's okay. It's okay. There's a lot of these songs that are just okay. I, I can't really judge that song, to be honest. I don't think that was the chorus. And without the chorus, there's really not much I can say other than the fact that if Ian had one job and it was to sell that song, I felt he sold it. There was that hand moment, which I appreciated. Okay, so my top, so 15 to 10. Um, I put 15th as Chris with Indescribable. Ultimately, I think that that song, there is something with that. And I think that kind of power rock thing would by, would be potentially a decent sound to send. Uh, number 14, I've got Jake, Love You Like That. Actually, that's not a bad pop number. I didn't mind it. Um, it kind of did stay in my head a little bit. Uh, 13, Mikhail. I actually thought I would like to hear that the full three minutes. To do this top 15, I had to go back and actually listen to a few other countdowns, shorter snippets. And there's something about that song that does sound quite high quality. So I put that in my top 15 because I could not not. Yeah, there's something about that song. Jada, I Depend On You. It's not a bad song, actually. I just, I have question mark over the religious connotations of some of those words. I hope it's not a religious song. It might not be, but it's not too bad. Brooke, really hard to, to rank that song. It had to go in my top 15 based on vocals and the production quality. Actually, when you go back over the songs and hers and you hear hers again after hearing all the others, it does sound more expensive. But I need to hear that full chorus in full. Nathan Creep and Wars, I actually think that's not a bad song. Oh, so from 10 to 5, 10 to 6, 10 to 6. Nathan with Creep and Wars, this isn't a bad song actually. Um, it was higher, and then I listened to a few others, and it started going down a little bit more. There's some songs that are higher, which I'm just giving the benefit of the doubt, because I think when I hear it in full, I'll prefer it more. Kirsty Girls Get Down, I mean, it's very, very predictable. It's not doing anything new, but nonetheless, out of all the upbeat numbers, it's one of the better ones. I'm looking forward to seeing that one on stage. Number eight, Lindsay Haunted. This is just a personal thing for me. I do like a kind of old school sounding power ballad, ballad sound, uh, sung by a woman vocal. I quite like that one. Number seven, Matt Black. I really want to make this one higher, but ultimately I don't think we heard the chorus, but we know that when we see that one live, it's going to wow us. And uh, he was robbed last year. He deserved a higher placing for his song. So I'm wishing him all the best of luck this year. Number six, Maxine Pace or Maxine Pachi. Obviously, it was one of the first ones I heard out of all 40 songs. When you go back and listen to them all again, the fact that actually you're listening to a stripped back song that isn't trying to kind of, you know, wow you with kind of any gimmicks or whatever. It's just kind of pure. And her live vocal on the recording sounded beautiful. So if she's able to mimic that identically live, that's going to be a moment. That's not bad. That's not a bad song. So that's my number six. Number five. Um, and then my five to three. We'll do five to three. Um, Haley's TikTok. Actually, that again, a bit like Brooke, sounds very, very expensive. There's evidently a little bit of money behind that song. And you can't ignore the quality of the sound of that song in regards to the production. I can't wait to hear that one for the full three minutes. I put that in there because it sounds a quite decent quality song. Uh, number four, Geo, I said, it's my vibe. Like that kind of anthemic, upbeat production. I, I referenced Brandy's <laughs> recent song that she did for the Disney Channel. It's that sort of vibe. And I've been listening to that one nonstop at the moment. And as soon as I heard that song, it gave me that vibe. I can't wait to see that one live on stage. I've given that one my fourth place. And my third place, 
I, I did wax lyricals about Dominic and Anna, and I know some, some people are going to be like, what? But also, when you listen to all 40 snippets, <laughs> when you get to the last third, you almost award the ones that stand out. I love musical sounding songs. You know they're evidently decent performers, so they're going to sing this one, like, well. It is obviously giving musical vibes. If it does win MESC 2023, I don't know how well it would do at Eurovision, probably wouldn't do very well. But nonetheless... Out of all of these 40 snippets, which songs do I really want to listen for the full three minutes to check it out? That has to be up there. So my top two, um, it's really difficult because I felt that I had more of a flavour of Eliana's compared to Aiden's. I think you really need to listen to more of Aiden's song to get a real grasp of it because the song starts getting going near the end of the snippet because almost like he's chosen to do the kind of pre-chorus, hasn't he? The kind of interlude going up to the chorus as the majority of that snippet. So it's really, really difficult to judge it. But ultimately, and I'm not putting this in there because obviously there is so much love for Aiden right now and a lot of justice for Aiden and people already giving Aiden the crown before we've even kind of got to the first quarter final. But you can hear with the snippet. And obviously, if he's chosen this song over Madame and the one that he's done with Ira Oscar, he must have had a few songs to choose from. And he's released those songs. So I'm assuming he's saving the best for last. So I really like Madame. And if, if he believes this is better, then it's, it's gonna be a bop. So, but... I felt that I had more of a flavour of Eliana's and I loved it. So for me, I put Aiden as number two and Eliana as number one. But these are just snippets. So not only have we not only heard the full recording, but moreover, we've not seen them live. So this is based on just the snippets. So that's my top 15. Um, but let me know what you um, think. Um, that of maybe 40 snippets sitting down, not moving, wasn't the best idea in the world. And as a result of that, the ones that came in the last quarter definitely suffered but nonetheless i've done it now so what do you think who is your favorite from this lot who's your top 10 your top 15 who are you rooting for please let me know in the comments below if you're still here and you haven't subscribed to my channel please do please click the notification button so you're informed if and when i post videos and yeah until next time stay safe